وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters Today we normally take a tafsir class We are going to take a tafsir But not where we were last week The reason is because the notes that I gathered The benefits that I gathered from the Qissa to Ashab al-Ukhdud. Um, we mentioned 14 benefits. The other remaining 16 benefits, I don't know where I took it. I don't know where I placed it. So inshallah ta'ala, I hope I can find it by next week, or if not, then I'll have to, inshallah ta'ala, look at the story again and see if I can extract it uh, again, bi'idhnillah al kareem But inshallah ta'ala, we do the tafsir of an ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Qur'an, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًا إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ This is the sixth ayah of Surah Al-Fatir. Surah Al-Fatir, ayah six. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in this ayah, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ That verily shaytan is for you an enemy. فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًا Take him as an enemy. إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا shaytan calls حِزْبَهُ His followers. Those who are of his group. Shaytan calls them. إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ So they can be from the inhabitants and those who reside in the hellfire. This ayah tells us that shaytan is our enemy. And Allah wa ta'ala instructs us in this verse, he says, فَاتَّخِذُوهُ adua." He's your enemy and take him as an enemy. And then Allah wa ta'ala tells us that shaytan is calling those who follow him and those who go in line with him. Allah tells us, إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ Shaytan, he calls those who follow him to the hellfire. Brothers and sisters, the shayateen are two types. Number one is shaytanul insi, humans. Some humans are shaytan. And some shayateen are jinn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, من الجنة والناس From the human, there's a shaytan. And from the jinn, there's a shaytan. Also in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ عَدُوًّا مِنَ الْمُلْكِ وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا Unlike that we have made لِكُلِّ نَبِي Every Prophet عَدُوًّا We made an enemy for him. Every Prophet and Messenger that came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, we made for them an enemy. Then Allah wa ta'ala, He tells us that the enemy that He has made for them, He says, شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنْسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ زُخُفَ الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا the enemies that Allah placed for the prophets and the messengers are two. Shayateen al-insi wal-jinn. Shaytans which are humans and shayateen which are devils or, or jinns. Then Allah tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala yuhi ba'duhum They send unto each other the shayateen, the humans they, do, they talk to the jinn and the jinn talk to the humans. يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ They talk to each other 
with what? Zukhruf al qawl ghurura. Decorative speech in delusion. The form and the way that they speak to each other is words that are beautified. Allah then says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوهُ فَذَرْهُمْ وَمَا يَفْتَرُونَ If Allah willed, they would not have done this. Then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, فَذَرْهُمْ leave them. وَمَا يَفْتَرُونَ That which they make up and they invent. So what we take is that the shayateen that the people generally tend to care about and to be concerned about are the ones that which are jinn. But many don't realize that the humans that are jinn, uh, who humans that are shayateen. And Allah tells us in the ayah, Allah took a covenant and an oath with us to not worship shaytan. Allah says in the Quran, أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ وَأَنِ اعْبُدُونِي هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْقِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ Did I not take a covenant and an oath with you, O mankind? For what? Ya Bani Adam and the children of Adam. Did I not take an ahd with you? A mithaq, a covenant. Which is this covenant that Allah took with us? Allah ta'budu shaytan that you do not worship shaytan. Innahu lakum aduwu mubin. He is your true enemy. Shaytan is your enemy. Allah tells us that he took a covenant with us that we don't worship him. Who should we worship? Wa ani'buduni, worship me. Hada siratun mustaqim. That's the straight path. That's the path that will lead you to Jannah. And don't take the path of what? Obeying shaytan and worshipping him. Then Allah tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا Shaytan, he misguided generations and nations. Many people were misguided. Allah then says, أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْقِلُونَ Are you not ones who are then going to ponder and look at what shaytan has done to many? What is it, worshipping shaytan? What does it mean? Worshipping shaytan means that you listen to him. As Allah told us in Surah Maryam, when Nabiullah Ibrahim came to his father and he said to his father, Ya Abati, la ta'budu shaytan, inna shaytan kana lirrahman asiyya. Ya Abati, my father, la ta'budu shaytan, don't worship shaytan. Why? Shaytan was ya, ya abati la ta'budu shaytan Inna shaytan kana lirrahman asiyya Shaytan was one that disobeyed its Lord Ponder here Allah tells us here that Ibrahim spoke to his father He said, Ya abati, oh my father La ta'budu shaytan, don't worship shaytan How was he worshipping shaytan? Ibn Kathir says, Ya abati, la ta'budu shaytan Ay la tut'i shaytan Don't obey him by listening to what he tells you to do Don't follow his speech don't follow what he is calling you to. Why? Inna shaytan kana lirrahman asiyya. Shaytan disobeyed Allah. Why did the ayah say, Inna shaytan kana lirrahman? Why ar-Rahman? Why no other name from the names of Allah? Why specifically was the word ar-Rahman here used? Because the word sin is mentioned. Your Lord is very merciful. Iblis should not have disobeyed Allah, a very merciful creator who was kind and generous to Iblis and Iblis disobeyed him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna shaytana kana lirrahmani. Shaytan was to Allah ar-Rahman, the most merciful. Asiyan, one who disobeyed him. When did the enmity of Iblis start? When did Iblis start to show this enmity towards mankind? The day that mankind started, the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, uh, created Adam, shaytan showed his enmity and hate. Allah tells us in the Quran, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ Allah says, when, وَإِذْ, the time that we said to the angels, وَسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ, prostrate to Adam. Prostrate to what? Adam. And pay attention here, وَسْجُدُوا, prostrate. Prostration is the greatest symbol of servitude, Ibn Qayyim says. And that's why the masjid is called masjid. It comes from the word sujood. The whole masjid was named after sujood. And aqrabu ma yakunu al-abdu li rabbi is the time when the person is most closest to what? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah commanded subhanahu wa ta'ala Iblis to prostrate to Adam. Everybody prostrated. The angels, they listened and they prostrated. Look what Allah says in the ayah, فَسَجَدُوا The word that's used here is a fa. Fa shows sur'iyah. It shows as soon as Allah commanded them to prostrate, the angels prostrated. It didn't say وَسَجَدُوا Because وَسَجَدُوا means it could be days later, it could be months later, it could be time later. But the word fa, fa, فَسَجَدُوا shows that the angels, as soon as Allah tabarak wa ta'ala told them to prostrate, they prostrated straight away. They didn't delay. فَسَجَدُوا All of them did it. And then Allah wa ta'ala he said, إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ Except Iblis. إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ What did he do? أَلَا He refused. وَاسْتَكْبَرَ He became arrogant. وَكَانَ And Iblis was. He was from the kafirin, the disbelievers of Allah. Iblis refused to prostrate to Adam. This is where the enmity of Iblis starts now. أَلَا He said, no, I'm not going to prostrate. Who is he saying this to? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. لذلك Allah said to him, قَالَ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَنْ تَسْجُدَ Allah says to Iblis, what stopped you to prostrate to قَالَ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَنْ تَسْجُدَ إِنْ أَمَرْتُكَ What prevented you, what stopped you to prostrate when I commanded you? What did Iblis say? In one surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ I am better than him. خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ I am better than Adam, so why should I prostrate to him? He's lower than me in rank. Listen to this, brothers. Iblis took a method, he set a way. I want you to all ponder here. Iblis looked at who's greater by the essence, and he did not look at who's greater in action. And that's what Allah looks at. Allah looks at if a person is noble or not, it's based on their action. Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. The one that's the highest in the eyes of your Lord Allah. And the one that Allah honors is a person's actions, not your background and where you're from and your lineage and your people. That's not what honors you. That's not what raises you. Are we all together, brothers? In akramakum indallahi atqaakum. In Iblis said, my essence, what I'm made from, is making me better than who? Is making me better than? Adam alayhi salam. In another ayah he says, قَالَ لَمْ أَكُنْ لِأَسْجُدَ لِبَشَرٍ خَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ In another ayah he said, I am not one. This is not me. Look at the arrogance. Look at the hard-headedness. Look at the stubbornness. He said, I am not one who would prostrate to a human that you made out of clay. I'm not one to do that. I don't do that. لِبَشَرٍ خَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ صَلْصَالِ مِنْ حَمَاءٍ مَسْنُونَ I'm not one that does that. It was created from that. I'm not one who does that. Because, because Iblis has now shown hate and enmity, and there's two reasons why Iblis did this. The first is arrogance, and the second one is what, brothers? Jealousy. He's, he, he has jealousy towards Adam. Hate. And this is the enmity that started that day, brothers. Iblis, that minute it started for him. He started to show enmity to our father, and Adam didn't do anything to him. Adam did not do anything to him. Then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said to him, قَالَ فَهْبِطْ فَمَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَنْ تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا Allah says, Iblis, go down, leave Jannah. You have no rights to be arrogant in Jannah. Jannah, arrogant people don't stay in it. قَالَ فَهْبِطْ مِنْهَا فَمَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَنْ تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا فَخْرُجْ Leave it. إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ You are from what? You are from the opposite of what you think you are. You are from the صَاغِرِين Those who are low. Those who are pathetic. Those who are worthless, that's what you truly are. Why is he low? Because he refused to go against Allah's command. And you need to know, anyone who goes against Allah's command is from the sahirin. However high he thinks of himself, however high he thinks he's noble, Iblis was with the angels. But the minute he disobeyed his Lord, what did Allah say to him? Innaka, innaka min sahirin You are from those who are sahir. Sahir is a person who is low, who means nothing. Iblis then looked at Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and Iblis said to Allah, Qala anzirni. Oh Allah, prolong my life for me. Give me a duration of time to live. Qala anzirni. I want to live. Iblis knew 
that Allah is the one who is mudabbir. He knows he's the one who runs everything and controls everything. He knows he can't have this by himself. So what does he say? He says, قَالَ فَأَنذِرْنِي فأنذر, O oh Allah, let me live for a duration, a time. What do I want to? Until when? إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ The day where you resurrect the slaves and you bring them back to life. O oh Allah, delay my life. Let me live for that long. Then Allah wa ta'ala said to him, قَالَ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْذَرِينَ Okay, you are from those who are going to be waited for then. You're going to live until the day of judgment. Then he looked at Allah and he said to him, قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Because you misguided me, O oh Allah, لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Look at the statement he's saying here right now. Ponder and look at your enemy's words. And what he's saying, قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي O oh Allah, because you misguided me through Adam, this is what I'm going to do to these people. فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ what did Allah say before? Alam a'had ilaykum ya bani adam an la ta'budu ash-shaytan inna ash-shaytan qala alam a'had ilaykum ya bani adam an la ta'budu ash-shaytan innahu lakum aduw mubin wa an i'buduni hada sirat mustaqim da sirat mustaqim salam al istan in front of him la aq'udanna lahum siratak al mustaqim the straight path that every salah that we pray dhuhr asr maghrib isha fajr five daily prayers right each rak'ah, what do we say? Ihdira sirat al-mustaqim. That's sirat al-mustaqim. I'm going to come to it. La'aq'udanna lahum siratak al-mustaqim. And what, what will I do? Thumma la'atirna hum bayni aydihim. I will come to them from the front. I will stand right in front of them. Thumma la'atirna min bayni aydihim wa min khalfihim. I will come to them in the front and from the back. Some of the mufassirin, they said, min bayni aydihim means the dunya, uh, the, the akhirah. And behind them means the dunya. I will make them Deceive, I'll deceive them in their worldly affairs so it corrupts their hereafter affairs. And I'll also come to them on the right. And I'll come to them on the left. I'll come to them from the front, from the back, right and left. The Mufassirin, they said, he couldn't say that I will go between them above. Then Allah Ta'ala's mercy comes down. And he can't get in between Allah and his creation. So Iblis made that oath. And he made that. So what does he do? Iblis will make you, brothers and sisters, become the one who falls off that path. That's what he wants. That's his aim and objective. And the scholars, they say, Ashaddu silah Iblis. The greatest weapon Iblis carries. Allahu Akbar. Pay attention, Ibn al-Qayyim said. Iblis is now standing in front of you, on your right, on your left, behind you, all directions. But the biggest weapon that he's carrying, the greatest weapon that Iblis has, Ashaddu Silah Iblis, is a tasweef, is procrastination. It's the biggest weapon he has. He will never let you achieve something today. He will never let you do something that you, the good that you thought of doing. And the khayr that you wanted to accomplish, he will never let you do it today. He will make you do it tomorrow. And when tomorrow comes, you're tomorrow, and then to, and tomorrow, and then tomorrow. And he will never let you achieve it. That's his greatest weapon, Ibn Qayyim says. Ashaddu silah Iblis. He said, at tasweef The greatest weapon that Iblis carries and uses against the children of Adam is to procrastinate. And is to never achieve what you're looking. And the great... Leader, he said, Abdullah ibn Marwan ibn al Hakam, as Al Imam ibn Abi Dunya brings in his kitab, as Zuhd, he said, Wala turji fi'l al khayri yawman. Never delay a good of today. Never delay it. Pay attention to this statement. Wala turji fi'l al khayri. Never delay a good of today. إلى غد to tomorrow لعل غدا يأتي وأنت فقيد never delay a good of today a good that you can achieve today never delay it for tomorrow لعل غدا يأتي because tomorrow can come وأنت فقيد and you're absent you're not alive Allah has taken you from this world 
and you're from those who are residing in your grave, he will use that against you. He'll say to you, don't worry, don't memorize today, inshallah, tomorrow. I will organize my schedule on Monday. When this time comes, I will do this. You guys all know the famous story, Qissatul Asha. Al Asha was the great Arab poet, and his statement was given great weight. Al Asha. If he spoke, his words would go around Mecca. The Arabs would read that line of poetry. He was a poet from the great poets of the Arabs, Al Asha. Asha, at a very old age, he decided to take Islam. He said, I can't live this life of kufr and disbelief of Allah. So he made his mind up, he got out of his bed, he got his riding beast ready, he mounted on it, and he made his way to Medina. Quraysh heard of Asha heading towards Medina to take Islam. And if he does, the man has influence in Mecca. So they grabbed him, and they said to him, Al-Asha, we heard you're going to Mecca, uh, Medina, to meet Muhammad. He said, I am. And I want to take Islam. They said, have you not heard that Muhammad prevents zina? Did you not know that he says you can't do zina? He does not let you do zina. Asha said, I'm an old man. The desires and the shahwa of women is died out on me. I have no need for it. They thought. They said, Al-Asha, do you not know Muhammad prevents, he prohibits alcohol? The consumption of alcohol? He said, really? They said, yes. He doesn't allow a person to drink alcohol. So Al-Asha said, okay, if that's the case, he doesn't allow that. That's something my nafs is inclined to. I will go back to Mecca. This year I will spend drinking alcohol. Until I am finished with alcohol this year, and my desires goes, I will make my way to Medina and I will testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. And Al-Asha died that year drinking alcohol. So what did Iblis do? And what did the Shayateen Al-Insi do to him? And what did Shayateen Al-Jinni do to him? At Taswif, they made him delay the good that he could have done that day. The poet also said, Ma Maba Fat. What has happened in the past has happened in the past. It's gone. It's the time that has gone. There's nothing you can do about it. And what you are desiring and you want is the future. So it's not in your hand. The thing that you're saying, I will, is in the future. It's not in your hand. And the past is gone. And the future is not in your hand. It's in front of you. The only time that you actually have control over is the one you're in. The one that's gone is gone. And the one that's going to come, Allah alam if you're going to see it. The real time that you have control over is the one that you're living in right now. Many brothers and sisters that we all know today, if we spoke, speak to them and say, brother, you're on the streets, brother and sister, what you're doing is not right. Allah has prohibited this. Stay away from this. Don't worry. I'm taking my time now. Inshallah ta'ala, I will come to my senses soon. And inshallah ta'ala, go Umrah. And, 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 and. And majority of them, they die in the way that they are. And this is from what, brothers and sisters? This is from the plot and the plan of shaitan. And this is what pleases him. That you stay in the way that you are. And your tomorrow just never comes. So ponder today. Any good that comes to you, if you're not going to do it that minute you're in, then trust me, you're not going to do it tomorrow when it comes. You won't do it the day after and the day after. Iblis ibn al-Qayyim mentions he has six stages and six, six steps. This is Iblis's guideline. He follows. If he doesn't accomplish the first one, he moves on to the second. If he doesn't accomplish the second, he moves on to the third and then the fourth and then the fifth and then the sixth and the sixth. Iblis has these six steps that he follows. He did that from the time his enmity started with Adam until today. And people follow him with this. And he makes a hizb, a group. The first of them is, Iblis works to making people disbelievers. He works towards kufr. 
That's the first stage. He makes the person insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or leave the religion of Islam or never take Islam. That's the biggest thing that he wants to achieve. Disbelief is the greatest stage for him. Why? Because the person who falls into disbelief will stay in the hellfire forever. And for him, that's what he wants. He will work hard to bring doubt to you about your religion. He will bring doubt to you regarding the angels. This Prophet Muhammad. If God does exist, then why is this evil taking place in this earth? Doubts about your own religion. If that doesn't work for Iblis, and he doesn't accomplish that, and he doesn't convince you to become a disbeliever, don't ever think to yourself that Iblis will give up and walk away. He will easily move to the second option that he has. And the second option Ibn Ruqayy mentions is that he, he jumps to bid'ah, innovation. He makes you introduce matters into the religion or do acts that are not part of the religion. Either you are the one that's bringing these things into the religion and you're the one who's introducing it into the religion when it's not from it. Or you are doing an act that has been introduced into the religion by somebody else and you think you're getting closer to Allah by it. Sufyan ibn Sa'id al-Thawri, rahimahullah, he said, he said that innovation is more beloved to Iblis than sins. Iblis loves innovation more. Innovation and falling into acts of innovation and beliefs of innovation is more pleasing and more beloved to Iblis than what? Than a person committing sins. لِأَنَّ الْمَعْصِيَةُ يُتَابُ مِنْهَا because since people generally repent from it, the alcoholic, the one who's committing zina, he knows what he's doing is wrong. As for the one who is committing innovation, actually believes he's getting closer to Allah by it. Sins are generally repented from. But, uh, but innovation, the person doesn't believe what he's doing is wrong. So why would he repent for? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Inna ahl al-bid'ah, the people of innovation are sharrun min ahl al-ma'asi. That the people of innovation, who innovate in the religion, are worse than the sinners. Min ahl al-ma'asi al-shahwaniyah, bis sunnat wal ijma'ah. They are worse than them by the sunnah of the Prophet. The Prophet's sunnah shows that. And the consent of the Ummah showed this. The Kalam Uman. Whose speech is this? This is the Kalam of uh, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. He said, Inna ahl al-bid'ah. The innovators are sharrun min ahl al-ma'asi. They are worse than the innovators. Which is in innovate, which, what are they worse than? They are worse than the sinners, sorry. Min ahl al-ma'asi al-shahwaniyya. Those whose sins are based on desires, the Sunnah wal Ijma, and Ibn Taymiyyah explains why. There was a man at the time of the Prophet ﷺ who used to drink. He used to drink alcohol. And when he used to drink alcohol, some of the companions they cursed him. And the Prophet ﷺ he said to the companions, لا تلعنه, don't curse this man, فإنه يحب الله ورسوله. This man loves Allah and his messenger. Don't curse him. This man was a man who used to drink alcohol. The Prophet ﷺ said, Don't curse this man. Allah is what? What's curse? At-tardu min rahmatillah. Allah's rahmah is distant from him. The Prophet said, Don't curse this man. He loves Allah and his Allah and his messenger. But when it came to the khawarij, who were a deviated group, who went short in their in matters pertaining to aqeed and i'tiqad, they fell into innovation. This man was drinking alcohol. This problem of his was al-ma'asi al-shahwaniyya. His shahwa was towards drinking alcohol. But the khawarij who fell into bid'ah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَإِنْ أَدَرَكْتُهُمْ If I meet the khawarij, لَأَقْتُلَنَّهُمْ قَتْلَعَاد. 
I will kill them. The killing of the what? Ad, right? The Prophet said that. What does Allah say about the people of Ad in the Quran? فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَةِ مِنْ مَعْنَى فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَةِ When Allah destroyed the people of Ad, Allah is saying, was there any remaining of theirs? In other words, Allah wa ta'ala, He destroyed them off the face of this earth. And then the Prophet is saying to you that if I meet the Khawarij, I will not let one of them live. I will take them all off the face of this earth. And here the one who was drinking alcohol, the Prophet said to him, what? The companion said, don't curse him, let alone kill him. So this shows what? The innovation is what? It's worse than sins. That is worse than sins. So Iblis would push you to innovation. And he would make you do acts of innovation. If he doesn't succeed in that, the second option, Ibn Uqayyim saying this, he doesn't succeed in that, he doesn't accomplish that, he moves on to the third, which is al kabair Iblis will take you to what? Major sins. He will take you to major sins. When he takes you to major sins, listen to this, brothers. There were some people who Iblis succeeded in making them do major sins. He succeeded in that. He accomplished that. And they fell into acts which were major sins. But don't you ever think to yourself that Iblis will just stop there and be content that way. If he could push you up a bit more, he would push you to the innovation again. And we see a people today who sing music and they believe they're getting closer to Allah by doing music. Music is a kabira to al kabair. But it became an act of what? Innovation for them. They believe that they're getting closer to Allah by what? Doing this. They believe that they're getting closer to Allah by what? By this particular act. They believe it's a form of worship, which then makes it a what? An innovation. So they say in their music, the lyrics that they are singing, and what they are saying in the music, they say, Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, you know, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So it comes, it comes across as what? Something that is? That is halal. It's good. So don't you think to yourself. And then after that, within that music, we find them saying lyrics of what? Ya Hussein. Which Iblis does not stop at bid'ah. He pushes it more to what? <coughs> Kufr and shirk. Don't you ever think he will leave you at one point. Each stage he will push you to the west of it. And he will never make you go down. So he will try hard to make it, you fall into a kala'ir. He couldn't succeed in the kufr. Okay, he couldn't succeed in the bid'ah. Iblis won't give up. He will move to the third option. What's the third option that he will move to? al kabair Major sins. He couldn't succeed in that. You're a tough person, mashallah. Hard-working individual. You're not accepting that from him. You're, you've got some strong iman in you. He will say, okay, as sagair minor sins. He will make you do minor sins. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, Iyakum wa muhaqqarati dhunub. Be cautious from the sins that are belittled. Muhaqqarati dhunub are sins that you say, oh, this is minor, you know. I'm not the worst here. There are people doing zina out there. You know? I mean, there's worse people than I am. Iyakum, the Prophet said, be careful and cautious of what? Muhaqqarati dhunub. The sins that the people belittle. Fa'innahunna, those sins that you're belittling and that you're seeing to be small. Fa'innahunna yajtami'na, they will come together. Ala rajuli hatta yuhlikan, hatta yuhlikahu. These sins will come to him. These minor sins that you're saying, they will come together. One here, one minor sin here, one minor sin here, another minor sin. Minor coming together, what is it going to do to you? It's going to destroy you. The poet, he said, لا تحقرن صغيرة إن الجبال من الحصى Don't belittle a matter. For verily, the mountain that you see is made out of small pebbles that came together. Pebbles that came together is what this mountain is from. You're belittling this one sin. And then you're belittling in this one. And then you're belittling in this one. And then it's going to become a mountain for you. It's going to become a what? A mountain. And as Ibn Malikin, he said, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, a statement which is mawquf wa la yasihu marfu'an. It is correct that it's the statement of a sahabi that the Prophet, that Abdul Anas ibn Malikin said. You can find it in Sahih Bukhari. Anas ibn Malikin, he said, innakum la ta'amaluna a'mala. You people. Anas is saying this to the tabi'een. 
هو وات الله أكبر وتوكن أبا عطاء بن أبي رباح أبي عكلمة أبو عالية the likes of these men تابعين هو great and noble Anas is saying to them imagine if he saw us he said إنكم لا تعملون أعمالا هي أدق في عيونكم من الشعر وكنا نعد في أهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من المبيقات you guys are doing action today for you this sin that you're doing is more it's more lighter than a piece of hair هي أدق في عيونكم من الشعر it is more lighter than a piece of hair for you guys وكنا نعد وكنا نعد في أهد رسول الله من المبيقات us the companions at the time of the Prophet, we used to consider this particular sin that you guys are looking at as a piece of hair. We used to see at the time of the Prophet, min al muhlikat, mubiqat ya min al muhlikat. We used to see it from the sins that will destroy you, that will annihilate you. That's how we used to see it at the time of the Prophet. Have you guys ever come across the companions, any hadith, that the Prophet said something to them and they said, Ya Rasulullah, is this min al kabair? Is this from the major sins or messenger of Allah? Is it the minor sins? Have they ever, ever said that? Never. Did they even say when the Prophet commanded them to do something? Did they ever say, Ya Rasulullah, is this wajib? Is it sunnah? Never. Sahabas, every time they dealt with matters, act as though it was wajib for them. And every sin they were told to stay away from, they always took it as what? It was a major sin. They stayed away from it. So, Iyakum brothers, don't belittle a minor sin. And don't ever see it to be something small because it will destroy you. And it will be the thing that will... Take away the righteous deeds that you've come with. Iblis has not succeeded in doing that for you. He tried to, Iblis, make you fall into Sagair, but he couldn't succeed. He will move on to the fifth, which is Al-Mubah. Mubah means things that are not haram, they're permissible. The Sharia has allowed you to do it, it's your choice, it's legislated. He will make you spend too much time in that thing which is mubah. Like oversleeping. Kathratun no. Sleeping is mubah. It's allowed. You can sleep if you want. And if you want, you can leave it. But what he would do to you is, because he couldn't throw you into the sagair, Iblis is not going to give up. He's going to make you overdo the mubah. Look at your enemy. Is he not a true enemy? He's a true enemy. He's taken every step to bring you closer to the hellfire and distance you from Jannah. Even if he can't stop you from entering Jannah, Iblis, he wants you to go a, low, a level lower than the level that you could go to. That's what Allah said in the, in, uh, the ayah that I started with. He's an enemy. He's a true enemy. In any way he can cripple you, he will do it. So what would, he, what would he do to you? Kathratun no, sleep. Kathratun dhikr, excessive laughter. And also kathratun ijtima'ah, too many overgathering with people, always meeting people. And the asal is that you can meet people if you want to. You can socialize. He will make you overdo it. He will make you overuse your phone and your, your internet. He will make you overdo it. This is what he wants. If Iblis realizes this cannot happen and he cannot achieve this, then what he will do to you is that if two things have come that are good, there's a fadl and there's a mafdul, which is the sixth stage. One thing is greater than the other. He will make you take the one that's less. He will make you stay away from the good thing here. He will push you to the lesser of the two good. And he'll make you busy yourself with that which is less. He's at a point where he's what? He's weak. If Iblis realizes whispering to you, talking to you, trying to misguide you is going to make you stronger, he will leave you alone. As he did for Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Iblis approached Umar. And when he spoke to Umar, Umar being who he is, qawi, strong in his iman, as soon as Iblis whispered to him, whatever Iblis tried to tell him to do, he would double, double the effort. Iblis, you're telling me to do this? I promise I'll pray more. You're telling me to do this? I promise I will fast even more. So Iblis realized that tampering or trying to touch Umar or even trying to misguide Umar makes matters even worse for him. But he left Umar. 
So if Umar walks on that road, he walks on the other side. He believes he's misguiding Umar by leaving him alone. That's a true enemy. It's an enemy that's not going to leave you. And if he does leave you, he's only leaving you because there's a good in it for him. Because he said, فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَعَنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ Did I recite the ayah right? Ya Muhammad. Sahma wa akhri. Ya Sahma wa akhri ayah dah. Ya? So this is what he would do. And he would make sure that he comes to you from every direction. Brothers and sisters, Iblis has taken many methods, as I have told you, those six stages. There's one final point that I want to conclude with, inshallah ta'ala, which is very common that you see today. Which is that Iblis has a methodology in what he does. That particular evil that he wants you to do, there's something he does, particularly to he uses. And it is that he will always try to make you to change the name of that thing. When the thing has a bad name, your nafs is not inclined to go towards it. Your fitrah, your natural disposition won't go for it. So the name has to be changed. And then it it lets the nafs to go towards it. And this is common. Riba, what did Allah say in the Quran about riba? Interest, uh, riba, usury. What did Allah say about it? يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الْرِبَى وَيُرْبِ الصَّدَقَاتِ Right? Allah destroys riba. Does he not say, didn't Allah not say he will destroy riba? Huh? So why do we call it interest for? Why do we call it profit? Did Allah not say I'll destroy riba? Who brought this name? Where did this name come from? Profit or interest? And then this is the part that shaitan set. Where did he, when did he bring, when was this, this first time that he did it? Allah says in the Quran, فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِمْ إِلَيْهِمْ shaytan. Shaytan whispered to who? Adam and Hawa. Allah says, فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ shaytan. Shaytan came and he whispered to Adam and Hawa. He both said, what did he say to them? قَالَ يَا آدَمُ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكِ اللَّا يَبْلَى He said to him, يَا آدَمُ آدَمُ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ Shall I not show you شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ The tree of eternity. أعوذ بالله. It's the tree that's going to take Adam out of Jannah. He called it tree of eternity. Why? Because this is going to make Adam want to eat from that tree. And why did he call it the tree of eternity? Ibn Al-Qayyim, Ibn Kathir, Baghawi, Ibn Jarir, Qurtubi, many Mufassirin, they all mention the hikmah and the, the reason why Iblis chose that term, khuld, is because humans love eternity. We love that word. So he learned our nature. He knows our essence. So he used a term that would make our nafs inclined to it. He said, Ala adulluka ala shajaratil khuld. And what do we also like? We like leadership. And a kingdom that's not going to perish. Do you not want that, Adam? Once he used those two t- terms, Nabi Allah, Adam, what happened? He ate from the tree. This is a tariqa shaytaniya. It's a satanic path to change the term of things. Our youngsters, what do they call drugs? Food. Because everybody, food is good, it's got nutrition in it. What do they call alcohol? Juice. صح? They call alcohol juice. What do the kuffar call zina? They call it affair. A'udhu billah. To have an affair. Zina. They call it what? They call it affair. What do some people call shirk? They call it shafa'a. Tawassul. They give it terms that are shab'i terms. Ya akhi, it's what? This is what? Shirk. What do some people call sihr, magic? What do they call it? Karamat. This is sihr. He's a magician. They call it karamat. Karamat. This is... What do they call a shaytan? They call him a wali. So from wali, he never prays. He doesn't pray. 
He stopped praying 20 years ago. They say our Sheikh doesn't pray anymore. Why? Because he reached, he reached a level where وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ He reached that darajatul yaqeen. So he doesn't pray. Okay, now he's a shaitan then. No, he's a wali. You know, liya illa. So the term has to... Do you see, brothers, how it is? The name is changed. The people then are now... Because everybody likes the word wali. The nafs likes karamat. The nafs likes food. We love juice. We love interest and profit. So when that is changed... Iblis, that's what he makes the person and fall into this. Music is called Anashid Islamiyah. Music. It's music. It's called what? Anashid. It's called Shi'r, poetry. And it's what? It's actual music. Do you not see that, brothers? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith Abu Dawood narrated in hadith Abu Malik al Ash'ari. Hadith Abu Malik al Ash'ari. The Prophet said, La yashrabanna nasu min ummati. A people from amongst my nation will drink al khamra they will drink khamar. Yusammunaha bighayrismiha. They will give it a name other than its name. Ah, look at that. Juice. The Prophet told us they're going to do this. They're going to drink khamar and the Prophet said, Yusammunaha bighayrismiha. They're going to call it a name other than its what? They're going to call it what? They're going to call it a name other than its name. And that's a reality that you see. It's called juice. Shaitan does the opposite as well, which is what? The good, he gives it a bad name. The way he gives bad things, good name, he gives bad names to the things that are haq and the truth. This is a tariqah shaytaniya, brothers. That the things that are good, the things that are righteous, the things that are piety, he will make you give, he will give it a bad name. For example, he will make prophets be accused of being magicians, and fortune tellers, and liars, when they're the opposite of exactly what he's what's, what he's saying, what, what they're saying. Allah tells us in the Quran, "Qala al kafaru min qawmi, that a group of the people of the prophet they said to him, "Inna la naraka fi safaha." We see you as to be a dim-witted individual. The Prophet is from, from the what? The great, the most smartest of people. This is the people Allah chose. Allah knows who he's going to give his message to. Allah handpicked subhanahu wa ta'ala and chose subhanahu wa ta'ala who's going to be the Prophet and the messenger, right? So they said, Inna la naraka fi safahatin wa inna la nadhunuka min al-kadibin. And we think you're a liar. Inna lillah. Will Allah entrust prophets to be liars? The prophets are what? Truthful ones. Allah also said in the Quran that Nabi Allah, Musa and Harun. What was Nabi Allah, what was Musa and what was Harun? What were they both? Prophets from Allah. And what was Fir'aun, the men that he was using? What were they? Magicians. Look what the table got turned. Qalu hadani la sahirani. This is, the, this is what they said. In Hadani la Sahirani. Nabi Allah, Musa and Harun are magicians now. Both of them. And what's their poem? What, what do they want? They want to take you out of your, their lands, out of magic. No, they want to take you out of disbelief. But they, what did they turn it into? What did Shaitan make them turn it into? That they want to take you out of what? The lands. When, they, when Musa and Harun is trying to take them out of what? From the shackles of disbelief to the what? The freedom of... Faith and religion. Are we all together? Look how he changed terms. And he makes prophets look bad. And the people of the sunnah and the people upon haqq, that's how it's always been. Allah said to the prophet, كَذَلِكَ مَا أَتَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ O Muhammad, no messenger and prophet has come before you. مِنْ رَسُولٍ Any messenger. إِلَّا قَالُوا سَاحِرٌ أَوْ مَجْنُونٍ Except they said that he's a magician. And they said that he's a what? He is a... A crazy, insane person. You will always find that, brothers. When you start practicing, you before practicing, you were foul, you were ignorant, you were, you were, you were, you were every. When you start to become sensible and you start practicing, what do they call you? Look at him, holy. And they start giving you names to belittle you. They mock you. When in reality, before you were worse. If all of those names were said to you when you were bad, then it makes sense. Ah. 
Now that you're practicing, they give you the worst of Thai titles. So don't get fooled by it. This is a tariqa shaytaniya. It's a satanic path. Look what Nabi Allah Muhammad said. He said, Nabi Allah Muhammad was sitting one day at a place. And then Abu Bakr was sitting right next to him. And the wife of Abu Lahab started to run. She came walking towards... She came walking towards who? She came walking to Abu Bakr and the Prophet. Abu Bakr got scared and he said, Ya Rasulullah, she's coming to our direction. I'm scared that she might see you. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, she will not see me. She will not. She will not see me. When she came, she said that your, your sahib, your friend, Abu Bakr, and the Prophet's right there, she can't see him. She can't see him. So she said to him, your sahib, Muhammad, has come with lines of poetry. She's referring to Tabbat Yada Abi Lahabi wa Tabbat that came down. And he has insulted me. He said that Muhammad does not read poetry. He was rejecting the concept of her saying that he came with lines of poetry, not the fact that the Prophet did not, uh, that the Quran didn't speak against her. And then she stood up, uh, she turned away, and then she said, Mudammaman abayna. I'm a mudammamun abayna. Wadinahu qalayna. Wa amrahu asayna. Mudammamun abayna. The blameworthy one, we have what? We've refused them. Wadinahu qalayna. And his religion we rejected. We, we hate his religion. Wa amrahu asayna. And his matters we have what? He's, what he commanded us, we've disobeyed it. They're calling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what? Mudammam. What's his real name? Muhammad. What does Mudammam mean? The blameworthy one. What does Muhammad mean? The praiseworthy one. Look how they've changed his name that was good and his characteristics that were good and they gave him a bad title. Alayhi Salatu. Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. And then the Prophet said to the companions, Ala ta'ajaboona kayfa yasrifullahu anni. Do you not see how Allah diverted them from me, Shatama Quraysh, Quraysh have insulted and they've cursed and Allah diverted them from me. Yashtimuna Mudammaman, they are insulting a blameworthy one. Why not Muhammad? But me, I'm Muhammad, so the blame is going and the insult is going to a blameworthy one. I'm not a blameworthy one. I'm a praiseworthy one. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Ya ikhwatil kiram, my beloved brothers and sisters, your enemy Iblis has studied you and he has learnt you. And he takes every single step out there to misguide you, right? You need to take time out to learn your enemy, to study what he's like, what he thinks, what he's doing, how he's planning and he's plotting against you. And the ulama have actually taken time out to write books against them, against him, sorry. And to explain to you what type of individual he is. Al-Allama ibn al-Qayyim, he wrote a kitab, which I gathered some of those points from. His kitab, Igathatul Lahfan fi Masayid al-Shaytan, where he talks about the deception of Shaytan. Al-Imam ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah. He has a book called Talbisu Iblis, The Deceptions of Iblis. And many other scholars have written books on it. So take time out and study, inshallah ta'ala, who this individual is and what methods and ways that he takes anything which I have said that was incorrect and wrong is from me and shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Questions and answers. Before I take questions, I just wanted to say that there is going to be a lecture tomorrow at 4 o'clock that's going to start, inshallah ta'ala. It's in the Somali language. To please participate, those of you who speak the language, inshallah ta'ala. And those who don't, inshallah, maybe if you start coming to the Somali message more often, you might become, we might give you the nationality, yeah? And also the tafsir, inshallah, will be back on uh, next Friday, how, uh, the way it should be. There's no seerah tomorrow, okay? There's no seerah at 6 o'clock tomorrow. There's that event that I just told you, inshallah ta'ala. So there won't be a seerah. Um, but we have a class tomorrow 7 o'clock in the morning. Tomorrow 7 o'clock in the morning, we have a class where we speak about 20 things that a student of knowledge, when he starts to embark on knowledge, 20 things that are very stressful for him. 
So we'll talk about the problems of those, those 20 things that we all go through when we first want to seek knowledge. And how can we overcome those obstacles? I think they're 20 and I don't think they get out of those 20. These are the 20 I think. Everything you mentioned that you go through will be one of those 20. And the way to, be, to get out of it. That's on Saturday. On Sunday, we're going to speak about practical steps, step by step. Because a lot of people, people talk about the virtue of knowledge and whatnot. But on Sunday, 7 o'clock, we will talk about practical steps of how to seek knowledge. How can I physically, what do I do if I want to seek knowledge? Are we all together? Practical, physical way of studying and learning the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and researching and becoming a person who's grounded in in knowledge, inshallah ta'ala. So 7 o'clock in the morning on Saturday to 9 o'clock. And then 7 o'clock in the morning on what? Sunday to 9 o'clock in the morning. Brothers and sisters are welcome. Any questions? Allahu Akbar, this is mashallah. Fabbal. So what's the best way to avoid the waswas of? Shaytan. The best way that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned to us is that the person they do their adkar. You all know the hadith of Yahya ibn Zakariya radiallahu ta'ala anhu alayhi salatu wasalam that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that a person who ran away from the enemy and they went into a fortress and they locked themselves in that fortress can the enemy get to them? The person who does his adkar is like that. That's why the book that you guys see the fortress of the Muslim comes from the hadith. It comes from the hadith of the Prophet. A fortress of a Muslim, a fortress to defend yourself from shaitan. The greatest thing is what? The dhikr and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah yazala lisanaka ratba min dhikrillah. That your tongue does not become dry of the remembrance of Allah. Wherever you're sitting, you're doing your dhikr. This is what prevents you what? And takes. That's what Allah said in the Quran. وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّدْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ a shaytan becomes a misguides a person, whispers to a person when they leave off their what? Ya ikhwa, don't put your guards down. Ahmad ibn Hanbal on his last moments before he died, his son was next to his father, Abdullah. He saw his father and he heard Ahmad ibn Hanbal say, Ba'du, Ba'du, Ba'du. What did that mean? Yet, not yet, not yet. So he said to his father after, Dad, I heard you say this word. What did you mean? He said, Shaitan came to me and he said to me, Shaitan came to Ahmed ibn Abban. And he said to him, Ahmed, you've escaped from me. I couldn't catch you. And Ahmed said, no, you still haven't. I mean, I still haven't, sorry. As long as I'm alive, you can still catch me. Look how Ahmed, rahimahullah, didn't put his guards down. Because he knows even Iblis is still on his head, waiting to misguide in that particular moment. Until your nafs goes, shaitan is right next to your head, trying to whisper to you. So don't put your guards down. Inshallah. Yeah, questions? Yeah, questions? Yeah, Fadal. Yeah, so shaitan, there's two methods that shaitan takes in order to, to approach a person. The first one was shahwat desires. You know, we have a, us as humans, we're already, our nafs is always going to push us to evil. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ إِنَّ النَفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةُ بِالسُّوءِ Your nafs calls you to evil. That's your nafs. You already got an enemy there before even shaitan comes into the picture. And then you have shaitan trying his hardest, صح? And then this shaitan, where does he flow? In the shaitan, yajri min adami majra, majra dam. The shaitan flows in the person where? Huh? Ibn al Qayyim said the reason and the sir, the secret behind why Iblis is shackled in Ramadan is because he's running through the veins, and when the person fasts, the veins get tighter. Huh? Ibn al Qayyim, rahimahullah. 
Shaitan is taken out of your system. This is the time you can work hard if you want to work hard. So that's why you find a lot of people in the masjid in Ramadan and you find ibadah very easy in Ramadan. Have you realized? Mm-hmm. As soon as Ramadan finished the day, Eid is announced, so Isha is hard for the people. The people can't even do Isha. And before you saw Tarawih, brothers pray in Tarawih. Those are the brothers that only come Jum'ah. They only pray Jum'ah. Now they're able to pray Tarawih because the shaitan is, is uh, shackled. So the two things that shaitan will use is shahwa. So how do you destroy shahwa, brothers? I just told you by fasting a lot. By what? By fasting a lot. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, يَا مَعْشَرَ الشَّبَابِ مَنِ اسْتَطَعَ مِنْكُمُ الْبَاءَةَ فَلِيَتَزَوَّجْ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَعَلَيْهِ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ Anyone who's able to get married, then get married. If you can't get married, then what? Fast. Because fasting, what does it do? It destroys the shahwa, the desires. That's there. That's there. The only thing that's going to be in your mind is a piece of burger. The scholars of the Salaf used to not recommend praying all night so that you are not overcome by Fajr. So, what about the person who only wakes up an hour or 20 minutes before Fajr? Can that be considered Qiyamul Layl? Now, Qiyamul Layl is, as the hadith mentions, that the Prophet Allah comes down the last, last third of the night. So, any time before Fajr, if a person wakes up, that's Qiyamul Layl. But what time is the best? It's the last third of the night. The last time. If the person does it in the first, first, heart, uh, first third of the night or the second, then that's no problem. Like in the best is the last third of the night. Because it's not just Mujarrat Qiyamul Layl, it's also what? It's also that Allah is descending subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامَ مُحَمَّدْ نَصْرِ الْمَرْوَزِي الْإِمَامَ مُحَمَّدْ نَصْرِ الْمَرْوَزِي has a risa kitab called Qiyamul Layl. And he expands on it. I think it's the best kitab written in this affair. And Ibn Abi Dunya also has a kitab called Qiyamul Layl. When the person tries the last third of the night, they, they supplicate, they make dua, and Allah wa ta'ala obeys their dua and gives them what they are asking for. Now. What's the best way to overcome procrastination? Admitting that you're a person who has that. Many people don't admit it. Oh Allah, I don't have this. You see, generally, this is a big problem with many people. Lack of acknowledgement and being aware of something. Sah? The first step to cure is admitting that you have a deficiency. Sah, brothers? Our mother Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she was falsely accused of zina, unjustly, falsely accused of zina, but the Prophet, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard some news. He went to our mother Aisha. What did he say to her? He said, Ya Aisha, in al al Aisha, if you went out of your way and you did this sin, the first of all he said to her, he said, Admit that what you did was wrong. Thumma tubi ila Allah, then repent to Allah. صح? But if you're in a state of denial, you don't believe you have a problem, then are you going to go forward in anything? So many people, when you speak to them, say, Akhi, this is a problem, stop doing this. He said, Wallah, is my character, Wallah. It's just the way Allah created me. So whilst you're saying that, I've tried every means there is, and I don't think I can work on this. Whilst you're saying that, I don't think you're ever going to change this regard. So you're not going to. Wallah, you're not going to go. So you have to admit that this is an issue that you have. The second thing I feel like um, that a person needs to do is a dua. Therefore, we have to ask Allah everything that we need, right? So, there's no act of obedience that a person can come with unless they what? Do you, I ask you all a sincere question. Who today came to this class, before they came, lifted their hands up, asked Allah, Allahumma allimni. Oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. Allahumma faqihni fi deen. Oh Allah, give me comprehension of the religion. And they woke and left their house and came here. Hakada da'bu salaf. That's the salaf, the way they were. Then we give sadaqah on the road. They'll get money out, give sadaqah for them to understand the lesson, for them to, this is, this is how they were. Like you just walk in, you throw your shoes over there, you come in, and then you say, Wallahi, I'm not understanding these lessons, it's a bit too complicated for me. You see what's the problem here? 
So we have to be connected to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, supplicating to Him, begging Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Him to take this problem away from us, procrastination. A third problem that happens is you're with a people who are procrastinating themselves. You have to be with people who have high aspirations. A people are working hard. A people whose life is is to sleep on sofas. It's to sleep on the floor. They just they're going to go through volumes of books. They're going to read. For them tomorrow doesn't exist when it comes to knowledge and khair. They believe now, today, I don't care about tomorrow. If you hang around with us, those type of people, your aspiration goes. Lidalika, many of you here who feel like they're procrastinating things, I'll ask you guys, when you hang around with people who are strong in their iman and are very dedicated, what does it make you do? Uh, what does it make you do? It gets you, you do your job straight away. Does it, isn't that the case? Isn't that the case? Also, the other thing I believe that helps with procrastination is changing the environment that you're in. Okay? What do I mean by that? If you want to seek knowledge and you want to learn, a lot of the times, if you want to learn in your bed and you know you're a person who has a lot of procrastination or you want to sit in the living room and just drink a cup of tea, that's not going to work for you then. You need to go to the library where all you can hear is papers being turned over. So, this will then force you because you've put yourself in that type of bi'ah, that type of environment. That will make you work harder and it will make you get your work done at that particular moment. Mm-hmm. Someone asked Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin If a person says the shahada before they die But they never prayed Are they still entitled to, to a janazah? Ibn Uthaymin replied and said A person who leaves the salah is a disbeliever And same as the idol worshipper So if my parents die And they didn't pray Am I allowed to do a janazah for them? Anybody who took a shahada and died straight away and they didn't pray, of course they're a Muslim. At the time of the Prophet there was a companion in the middle of the battle. He took his shahada. He never prayed a salah for anybody. Huh? If the person dies after their shahada, I don't believe Shaykh Ibn Uthaymi said. Because this person's question is that Ibn Uthaymi says, if a person says the shahada, before they die, but they never pray, this is incorrect. I don't believe Shaykh Muthaymin said this. The person can take Shadu Allah ilaha illallah, but Shadu Allah Muhammad if he dies straight away after saying that, he never got the chance to pray, do we pay janaz on him? Ibn Rajab brought the ijma' in the kitab Jami' al-Bayani al-Ilm Jami' al-Ulum al-Hikam. Qurtubi brings it, uh, Ibn Abdul uh, Barak brings it in his kitab al-Timheed. He brings an ijma'ah. Ibn uh, uh, Sahib Kitab Bidayat al Mujtahid wa al Muqtasid. He brings Ijma'ah. Okay, Ijma'ah, Ibn Uthaymin, go all those Ijma'ah. That Ilaha illallah brings a person into Islam. Are we all together? Rather, there's a hadith in Musnad Imam Ahmed. Musnad Imam Ahmed. That a man came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, I can't pray five times a day. I'm only going to pray one salah. Can I come into Islam and will you take my shahada? The Prophet said, Aslim. Just say the shahada then. Just say the shahada. Another man came to the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to come into Islam. He said, the Prophet said, said, Aslim, take Islam. Ahmed narrated his mutim in Hadith Jabir. The Prophet said to him, Aslim, take, take Islam. He said, Inni ajiduhu karihan. I dislike it. The Prophet said, Qulha wa in kunta karihan. Say it even if you dislike it. So the shahada is a big, big word. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? And that brings a person into fold of Islam. Now the scholars differ on something. They never differ on what brings a person into Islam, but they differ what keeps them into Islam. Pay attention to that. Sahih? Do you see the difference? What brings you into Islam? They all are unanimous agreement. No khilaf. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad al-Rasulullah brings a person into Islam. They then differ what can take a person out of Islam. Some said that salah and abandoning on the prayer can take a person out of the fold of Islam. And another group of scholars, they said, no, nope, it doesn't. And Shaykh ibn Uthaymin and Shaykh ibn Baz and others are of the opinion that if a person leaves one prayer that they are a disbeliever. This view seems to be strong. Wallahu a'ala wa a'lam. Ahmed Fousi. Ah, Ahmed Fousi. I think, huh? Ahmed Fousi. His mother is waiting for him downstairs. We'll conclude there, inshaAllah ta'ala. 
uh, brothers who were in the Hivd class, uh, they should come to the office, inshallah ta'ala. The brothers who were doing the Hivd class with Ustad Abdul Ahad, please come to the office, inshallah ta'ala. Hey, last question. It's not from the Sunnah to say, Assalamu alaikum in a gathering, we were all sitting together. Sah? So when you come in, you say, you say, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Some people. So, as a person, shaitan from birth, or is it they become a shaitan because of the actions which they have come with? The Prophet told us in the hadith, "Ma min abdin." And the Prophet said, "Ma min mauludin illa wa huwa yuladu al fitra fa abawahu yuhawidani or yunasirani or yumajisani or kama qala alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam." That every single person is born, born on the natural disposition. Every person is a Muslim upon the fitrah. And then when the person becomes old in age or they grow, their parents play a role in bringing them into a belief. And pay attention, the hadith says, His mother and father, they either make him a Christian or they make him a... But they didn't say, the hadith didn't say that they make him a Muslim. So that's why when we see brothers who've left disbelief and become Muslims, we don't call them converts. It's incorrect to call them a convert. What do we call them? Reverts. Why do we call them a revert? Because they went back to what they were upon already, right? So we said reverts. Pay attention to that. So no one is evil from birth like that. Except those which the Sharia stated. Like Khadir, when he cut the head of that kid, and that kid didn't reach age of puberty. We'll say that kid is evil based on a textual evidence. But other than that, everybody who we, we see in front of us, then as a child, their fitrah is what? Their natural position is, is good. Later they become the shaitan that we mentioned. I said that was the last question, right? We'll keep it for next week, inshaAllah ta'ala. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, shaitan la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, wa atubu alayhi.